Let's start here today uh, with uh, a lot going on with the rules. Uh, Timmy, I know the orders, so you don't have to in my headset. You'll confuse me. Let's do the rules first, and let's talk about the times of the games. Two hours and 45 minutes compared to three hours and 17 minutes last year on opening day. Not opening day, all the op first games. It was a little different last year. Not everybody started on that first day. You know, here, there, and everywhere. So from that standpoint, the baseball, I mean, that's 32 minutes less than they had last year. And, you know, probably settle in right around 28 to 26 minutes. But that's a heck of a start. And there's no way you can't like that as far as the sport is concerned. Yes, a couple long ones. You know, the Corbin couldn't throw the ball over the plate, so 307 there. Red Sox and Orioles went a while, but that was 19 runs. But overall, from a time of a game standpoint, this is going to be a home run. All right, there are a couple little issues as far as uh, balls being issued and strikes being issued. But uh, you like what you are there as far as the uh, time of the games are concerned, the first day out. So that's number one. Plus, a lot of stolen bases. 21 of 23 yesterday. Only six last year on opening day, all the teams. 21 of 23 yesterday. So from a rules perspective, home run right out of the gate. Now, I'm not sure about the singles and the shift. But I'm just going to center right now on the time of the game. That, to me, is by far the most important thing. The dead time to get rid of it. I mean, I'll deal with the, I like the singles, and I like no shift. I like that. Although I, I can go either way with the shift idea, but I do like the scenario of the time of the game. That's a no-brainer. Good start there. That's number one. All right, let's give you a couple of themes, uh, a couple of takeaways from what I saw there on the first day of the season. Number one, and it's not just because he had five hits and reached base six times. First catcher to do that since 1901. You know, everybody else does it. You know, the Padres did it with Tatis. The, Mar the uh, Mariners did it with Rodriguez. Certainly Tampa did it with Franco. I tell you when I take the Orioles really seriously, why don't they try to get a long-term deal done with Rutschman, the catcher? The guy is, I mean, he's Hollywood. They love him. He's a first-round pick. He's Mr. Oriole all of a sudden after a little bit of a slow start last year. Why don't they sit there and see if they can offer him $230, $240 million CP signs? That's what I would consider, and that would do a lot of things. One, convince the Oriole fan base, who still might be a little skeptical that this is the real deal. We're going to be a, a factor in the American League East from this year and uh, beyond. It also makes you think they're going to stay in Camden Yards. I know they say that, but, you know, no question about staying in Baltimore. And obviously, you know, he is he's great. So, I mean, that would show me something. How about the, the Orioles here? If everybody, if the Mariners can do with Rodriguez and Tampa can do with Franco, why not do with a catcher who might be the next Johnny Bench? I understand. So that is the first thing I was thinking about with Watchman. Get him signed long term. That's a weird takeaway, but that is number one. Number two is Texas. 11 runs. They buried the Phillies. 11 run inning for Boach. And, of course, they took the ground off the hook, who had some trouble, gave up some runs, home runs and everything else. He didn't have to worry about it. So from that standpoint, you like the fact that uh, the Rangers did a nice job and scored a ton. Uh, it was in a nine-run inning. I said an 11-run inning. They're yelling at me. Was it 11 runs or nine runs? Whatever it was, they scored a ton of runs. It was nine. Thank you, Rich Savino. In the fourth inning, buried the Phillies. Good job for Texas. That team is worth keeping an eye on. They won a game when DeGrom didn't have his best stuff, and he left them in there in that fourth inning when he was struggling. So that's number one. A nine-run inning for, uh, for the Rangers. Last time they've done that on opening day, Bochy also managed. That was San Diego when they beat the Mets in 1997 and Bobby V. So uh, that's a scenario with Texas. Good start there. That's number three. Number four, the Blue Jays offense. Relentless. Back, back, back they came against St. Louis. Eighth inning they came from behind. Ninth inning they came from behind against Helsley. I'm not sure about him in a bullpen in a closing scenario. I know the Cardinals love him, but I'm not so sure his control could lose him. And then they pound on that slider. But the Blue Jays... Boy, they got a relentless offset, you know, with Guerrero and Bichette and Stringer and Varsho. I mean, there's a lot to like with that Blue Jay offense right out of the gate. Merrifield began yesterday with a walk to start that ninth inning. That Blue Jay offense is a big-time offense, so that was something that I took away from how relentless they can be scoring runs. That is number four. I thought the White Sox had a very good game yesterday. Uh, Griffal, I didn't realize he had such a long-term relationship with Eduardo Perez. I wish I knew that before we had uh, Eddie on a couple weeks ago. They did a little car film segment on the way to the game, and I hated Moncada. 
I mean, I hear about these fundamentals, and he's trying to go to third base in that one inning there in the eighth when they're down one nothing when the ball went through the legs of Abreu in that short right field in that ballpark with Tucker, who's a good outfielder. He's trying to take the extra base, leading off an inning down by a run. Come on, son. I mean, that is just so horrendous. But Grandor bailed him out. He hit the home run. Vaughn hit a two-run. Vaughn reminds me a lot of Matt Williams. He looks like him. Right-hand power hitter. Reminds me a lot of Matt Williams, and we wish him Godspeed, too, with his uh, you know, little uh, break there from San Diego. But he reminds me a little bit of him. Big two-run double. Uh, sees pitch well. That's a nice win by the White Sox, and they beat that Astro bullpen yesterday. Good job for them under their new manager there, and they get their first win. They, re they survived after Alvarez hit a home run in the ninth. And then finally, you know, I was thinking about this really the last few days anyway. The Dodgers, everybody's kind of writing the Dodgers off. San Diego's going to win the division. Didn't do anything in the offseason. Didn't spend any money. They got a big injury with Lux. No Bueller. He has Syndergaard. And, you know, they got a, you know, Gonsolin. They got a lot of guys from a pitching standpoint. You got to wonder about a little bit. You know, maybe the Dodgers uh, light a little fire under them. You know, for, the, for once... The pressure's off L.A. They killed Gallon, who everybody thought was a Cy Young Award contender. They buried him, scored a bunch of runs after being down 2-0, 8 unanswered. They got some contributions from a rookie. And you're going to hear Alana with Outman a little later on. Good job by the Dodgers. And meanwhile, San Diego with Snell, who never gets out of the fifth inning anyway, gives up uh, and they get buried by Colorado. I didn't see the game. Crone went nuts. They got a decent middle of the order. Marquez pitched pretty well for the Rockies. I'm sure that was sweet for Bud Black. They had a great crowd in San Diego. But the Padres, here's the thing about the Padres, that the Yankees know, the Dodgers know, Red Sox know. The Padres are going to be examined on a daily basis for 162 games. Media, fan bases, guys like me, we are going to be examining San Diego every game. That's the way it is when you got that kind of payroll and you made these kind of moves in the offseason. And, of course, they're going to get Tatis back. It's going to make it worse. So they are going to be examined every game. I didn't see it. The report I read, there were some boos in that seventh inning. You know what? When you are the king of the hill and you have spent the money that you have spent, you almost got to win every game. I thought that was interesting, that NL West. That's one game. I understand that. But what the heck? I got to kill 10 minutes. I thought that was interesting with L.A. and San Diego.